Hi guys, Pilipilot here, just doing another one. Um, my last autopilot tutorial was a little bit quiet, so I'm just redoing it. Hopefully, I, uh, you can hear me guys better. So, if we just uh, start off um, setting up the autopilot, so I've just programmed the FMC. If we uh, can see here, we've just programmed this FMC. Shannon to Shannon is what we're doing. Um, and the engines are just about to start up. The engines are starting now. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to show you how to set up the autopilot, basically. Um, just because last time it, I was a little bit quiet, you probably couldn't hear me. Um, I know a lot of people couldn't. So this time around, if we start off here, so the first thing you want to do your initial climb altitude for the f uh, departure. So mine is 4,000. So I just go selected. Roll the altitude up to 2,500 feet per minute. That's going to be my climb rate for today. And engage selected climb. There we go. Next thing you want to do, turn on the flight directors if you have an FMC program. Constraint display. As if we just have a look here. See that 3,300? Constraint display displays that, and that's very helpful. Next thing you want to do, arm the order throttle. That's a helpful little function which you need to do. Um, and I'll show how that works once we take off. Now you can go manage altitude, <coughs> however that doesn't always work. I find sometimes you get a very steep climb, or you don't really climb at all. Um, so I prefer to go vertical speed mode and set it up however I want. So if we just taxi up to the number here and get going. So at Shannon it's a left turn, so if we go left here. Okay, next thing we want to do, you want to start to do what the ECAM tells you for the rest of the flying. So, if we go packs off, packs are now off, that, that distinguishes. In a second, the takeoff config stuff will start to come up, which is good. As you see, I'm on multiplayer just for this video, just so you guys can see. Just so you can see some people. Um, and I just leave it on. So, as we start to text you to the runway, takeoff config is something should, uh, that should appear in a second, and it'll ask us to do some stuff. What you want to do is you want to arm the spoilers for takeoff just by lifting it up, and that is in case you have to make an aborted takeoff where you just suddenly go into reverse thrust or hit the brakes. The spoilers will deploy to assist. So, today it's a flap 1 takeoff, so we'll set the flaps to 1. Predictive wind shear will turn that on. Uh, it's currently in up, however, the fly-by-wire team I know are looking to implement that in the future. In real life, what it does is it helps on takeoff, predict the wind shear that's going to happen, and um, stops you from having an issue on takeoff. All links to the fly-by-wire and everything will be in the description if you check down below. Next thing you want to do as we go off, this sadly is not coming off, but what you want to do is click all here, and that'll call up the cabin. I'll just turn this up. And what it's done basically is uh, call up the cabin and said the cabin crew set your seats for landing. Here we go, so it's just come on here. Next thing you want to do, order brake max, and you just follow this checklist, it'll tell you what to do. Takeoff config, that's here. You test the takeoff config there, and takeoff config's normal. It just said cabin crew seats for takeoff, um, which means we're all ready to go. So, next thing we want to do is as we just roll up to the runway, we're going to start to go all the lights on basically. All the lights, flick them on, apart from wing lights. Put them all on. Very fast taxiway here. Oh, he's just had a crash. So if you um, see on the wings here, the spoilers have deployed because I was going a little bit too fast and then start to brake. Your spoilers deploy. So all we do, if you have that problem, de-arm the spoilers and rearm them, and uh, that'll be good to go again. Wow, he's really messing around. <laughs> okay, so once you've done that. Um, we'll start. We'll just take off, and I can show you the rest of the stuff once we're in the air. So, let's go. Okay, so there we go. Full thrust. We start to roll. You can hear the engines build up there. Um, they're probably quite loud. So, uh, we're rolling. You just call out your speeds, basically. You read this, you go SRS, runway, auto, th uh, main toga, auto thrust, blue, 
V1 rotate. Your little purple diamond will be a rotate. Anyway, rotate. The gear goes up. That was a bit premature, so I left my gear lever up. Right. What you now want to do is follow the green cross on takeoff. Um, this is what the flight directors do. If I turn them off, green cross disappears. Turn them on, green cross disappears. And you want to make sure you have your green cross on, so you want the flight directors on. And that's what the flight directors do. This green cross is trying to follow this route, so the, the nose will follow the green cross and that will follow that route. That's because I've got heading on manage. If I go selected, the turning indicator will now turn to turn to whatever this says. Friend flying an alpha jet. Now, uh, speed mode, again, this is um, a select. If we go selected, dial the speed to whatever you want. So today we're going to be doing it at 180. That's right, leave a climb. All you do, reduce the thrust to the CL detent, and that engages auto throttle. I'm not quite following the flight plan here. That engages auto throttle. If we go selected speed, that'll now hold that speed. Oh, I'll take off. You now go ground slow to the arms. Anyway, um, that'll now hold that, which is a helpful thing. Now, manage will follow this green line uh, and the routing that's on here. So it'll take us around here. What I have noticed when doing this route before is when you get here, it tries to head here. So we'll just demonstrate heading um, selected mode there. It's okay, so now we're in the air. I just turn the taxi lights off, basically, turn the packs back on. Um, and we're good to go. So if we engage the autopilot now, we we'll just fly hand there. Vertical speed disengages. Re-engage that. The plane will climb a bit steeply, and it'll climb back up to what we need it to go to. Um, so we've got a bit of icing. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, whenever you see clouds, turn on the anti-ice. Um, I recommend it. It's always there. Ice is a huge part of this game. So if you notice, the aircraft's not climbing at 2,500 feet like I've asked it to, and that's because the speed is quite low, and so the plane is real think is realised that, and so therefore is dropping the nose, letting the speed build a bit. Um, so it's coming down now because we're starting to approach the cruise, and it's going to let the speed build. Uh, now once we've done that, um, so autopilot now will follow the route, um, but seeing as we're doing a circuit. Um, it'll still follow the route, uh, however, I, um, we've got to start preparing for arrival. So if we see here, you want to put in destination data. So if we go to our approach phase here, see it wants the temperature, the wind, the transition altitude, all that. So to find this out, we go at to AOC, and we go weather request. The meta for Shannon, click send, the request has been sent, and now we wait for company message to appear here. There you go, so I just cut the video. Um, company message has now appeared. So you go, message is received, and the Meta has arrived. That will take about maybe a minute, 30 seconds for that to come through. If you want, to, if you have the fly-by-wire development version, like I do, you can click print, and that will print off just there, which would be great. That prints off, and it just comes out there. Whilst that's printing, you want to go back to Perf, next phase, until you come to the approach phase here. Now the transition out uh, Shannon is 5,000. Transition altitude is the altitude at which you switch from standard pressure, which is 1013. All aircraft above their transition altitudes switch to 1013. If you're below it, you go to the local Q&H, which for us today is 9098-0988. Now we do is click collect paper. The paper now goes here, and this is a meter report. So if you see the Q here, 0988, that's the pressure. So we go 0988. I put that in Q and H. Then for the winds, we have two three zero at seventeen um, knots. So we just type that in two three zero slash one seven, and that just goes in the wind. Um, and then temperature here, it doesn't actually show this on the meter reports. Um, so what I recommend you doing is either if you're low to the ground like I am. We're just going to use our saturated temperature for today, and I know the weather here, temperature, sorry, is 5. What we can do is search up METAR online, and um, METAR, Echo Golf, India, November, November, and it'll just appear there. Now, MDA, that is your minimum altitude. So what you want to do is 46 feet is the altitude at Shannon, plus 100, that equals your minimum. So I just put that in there, and that goes great. 
So now that's the arrival destination input done, so we just go back to F plan. Um, go back to F plan, and we can just leave that there. The plane's now flying itself, following the route we've designated. So all we're doing now is we're just waiting for it to follow the route, but what will happen is, because um, we're turning here to sort of head back onto the base, what we're doing is, I'm just going to cut the video and you can come see and I'll show you the next bit. Hello, so we're just making the turn here at Gorto. And if you notice the plane here, for some reason this flight plan doesn't work. So this is a good example to show just selected heading. So you just click engage selected heading, dial this to whatever you want, I'm just using the roller here. Dial it across, and it'll so if we go 080, this blue arrow appears, 0 0 and the planes knows the pi uh, the yellow will point to that line. This green line is our actual heading. Due to a crosswind, if you see here, the wind, 295 at 3 that means the aircraft's actual heading is about 085. However, the nose is pointing 080. Just a little something to be aware of whenever you're trying to vex yourself. Now, because we're preparing for arrival, what you want to do is, if you say you're doing a long flight, when you start to approach your destination, you want to, um, and you've finished your descent, and you're on base or just about to turn to establish with the ILS, you want to click Confirm act uh, Activate Approach Phase. Confirm the Activate Approach. Now the Approach Phase is activated. That's quite important because that tells the aircraft you're ready to establish on the ILS. So that when we hit Lock Mode, which turns us to align with the ILS, it will align. So see here, we want to turn right again so that we follow the green line. So I'm going to turn us all the way right so that we're sort of on base for the airport. Again, not much visibility here today. Quite icy though. So now, as you approach your airport for arrival, say, on landing, when you've passed through 10,000 feet, you want to click LS. So this now displays the ILS information for Shannon. So we're 12 miles away from the airfield. Remember, that's direct, so that's this line here. We're going a bit further away. You can check, so see how this is called track miles, this this sort of angle here is track miles. So track miles wise we've got 20 miles to run. However, direct line as the crow flies to the airport, we've got 12 miles to run. Just something to be aware of. Now here, this is the glide slope, just the altitude we need to be at to establish. So at Shannon it's 3000, so all I'm going to do is go managed and it's going to descend me down to the altitude. It's not going to follow this magenta thing, this is just for the glide slope. What it's going to do is descend me to 3000. Now, because we're starting to get about 12 miles out, and that'll be fairly accurate as we're getting close to this line, I'm going to slow down to, I'm going to go 180 knots, which we're already doing, and we're going to go flap 2. So we'll just have a look, flap 2. Uh, and this is just a rough checklist I've sort of built up by working out and looking at speeds. Now speed's starting to increase, so the thrust will reduce. However, if you find that you're getting faster and faster and faster and the thrust is at idle and the speed's running away, you just deploy a bit of spoilers, only a small bit, maybe half, and that'll lop your speed off very fast. So, now we get starting to get around and turn back on the taxi lights so that when we land, they're there. And as you can see, the glide slope marker is a little bit higher than us um, as we're still a while off. So what I'm now going to do is turn right, so say you're on Vatsim, you'll get vectors from the controller probably, or he'll tell you to follow and you just follow your directed approach. Another handy feature on the FMC is DIR, direct to. So any waypoint in my flight plan I can go direct through, and the, when I go manage, the aircraft flies a straight line towards that waypoint I've gone direct to. Just turning us round. So say we want to go Rosso, which is this waypoint here, direct Rosso, and I'd hit direct, and that would go direct. And then when you go manage, it'll fly you to that waypoint. So if you ever get a controller telling you, go direct to Rosso, direct, DIR page, Rosso, direct, and that'll just cut you, cut your flight plan short. Now we're on base, and we're close to turning onto the airport. I've left that a bit late, so I was explaining that. You click lock mode, and what this will do is the aircraft will now turn to align with the runway. So if we see here, we've hit lock, the plane's turning, it's not following selected heading mode, it's not following the flight plan, it's turning based on the information it has to align us with the runway. 
to turn it exactly to a line. So we're 11 miles out here. Um, so I'm going to hold the speed. And that's going to turn us to a line. So that's lock for you. That's what lock mode does. And now, as the glide slope starts to get closer, what you do is you click lock mode, wait for it to establish you on the ILS, which this one has sort of done now. So it's not quite established, but it will turn on. What you now want to do is, as the glide slope marker gets closer to your actual altitude, you want to turn on approach mode, which is this button here. Click approach mode. Altitude, make sure it's unmanaged. What will now happen is, as you pick up the localizer, see Cat3 single, that's the type of ILS, the aircraft will descend with the glide path down to the airfield. As you see, we're still getting closer on here. Now we want to set up our auto brake for arrival, which in Shan it's going to be a low auto brake. Um, as it's just a long runway, we don't need to brake very sharply. So we've got low auto brake on, and um, it's set to 160 knots. There you go. So this thrust lever is idle, but because of my descent rate, sometimes the speed it's descending all right so I don't need to use spoilers for now however if that was not dropping I'd use spoilers so you want to make sure your altitudes are managed for approach mode so that the plane can descend with the glide path um, straight display make sure your ILS is on this is how you get this displayed once you've done that you want to arm your spoilers so that when you land the spoilers deploy and then when you get to 5 miles you want to put gear down and flaps 3 so we're just waiting to get closer so you can check if you're established with the ILS here this is your glide slope marker this is your ILS marker so if you can see we're off to the left when you're when you're yellow is aligned with the middle of this you're completely straight with the runway if it's off to the right you're to you're to the left that makes it the runway's to your right so you're too, too far to the left which we can check by going here and seeing oh yeah we're left of the runway so this is coming across which means we're on sort of a heading across the runway so that we line up nicely that's just what we want to make sure you check so that you know you're heading there. So here we go. The five mile checks have come up. So what we want to now do is go gear down. Maybe six miles, five miles, your preference. If you think uh, it's safer to go earlier, then it's safer to go earlier. When you go gear down, you go flaps three. It doesn't have to be in that order. You can go flaps three and gear down. And then you want to slow down to either 150 or 140, depending on how heavy you are. But quite light today, so I'm going to slow to 140. You then want to check the cabin by clicking all. Cabin gets checked. There we go. The cabin's checked. And there we go. We have visual on the runway here. You can see it coming through the cloud. Very icy plane. That's Mark's flights, and hopefully they'll fix that in a future update. Anyway, what we now want to do is go flaps full as we're getting closer. And what you want to do is slow down to your final approach speed, which we've clicked perf. 135. So if we just dial the speed down, just dial that to 135, and that's nice. The plane will now hold your final approach speed. You see, we've got a bit of a crosswind here today, meaning we're heading to the runway and yet we're pointing over there. Um, this is a good opportunity to demonstrate how accurate uh, the ILS is for different airports. So at some airports, you might think, "Oh, we're off to the right a bit here." And that's because the ILS is just not very accurate. And you've just got to take manual and fly it in. However, at Shannon, it's very accurate, so it'll head us straight to the runway. As I say, now you've completed everything on there. Oh my god. <laughs> Once you've completed everything on there, uh, you're good to land. Make sure you've checked. And I take control about two and a half miles out, so I'll take control in about a second. Sometimes I just go on wing view for a bit because the plane's there. And if you're on VATSIM, he'd then the controller would be probably at this distance telling you clear to land if it was busy. Probably slightly earlier if it wasn't busy. Um, and it's really as simple as that. So now I'm going to take manual control. Um, leave everything as it was. Just literally click AP and that'll disengage. I have a button on my side stick which I've just clicked. All you do is click that and that'll disengage. Now what I'm going to do is take manual thrust, which means if you see here, these blue dots here. So what I'm doing is thrusting back to the same thrust at which the autothrottle is using. And then I'm disengaging autothrottle so that the engines don't get a huge rev of thrust. Then what I'm doing is going to continue throttle back so that was a smooth disengage. So what I'm doing is holding the speed about 130. 
um, as that was our visual landing speed. Visual a VAPP is your visual approach speed, if we just have a look here. So we've got approach speed and landing speed, so it's 129, which was 130, roughly. So what we're doing is slowing down to about 130 for our landing speed and holding that. So I'm a bit below the glide slope here, because once I take um, manual control, I tend to just go for a visual and see if we can just visually land it. So what I'm doing is um, holding glide slope, idle for us when you hear retards, which I've just heard. There we go, and we're down. Hold it straight with the rudders, let the nose drop, and we're going reverse thrusters. Low auto brake will slow you down very fast, so sometimes I just disengage that. Um, as if you can see, we're already at a safe, controllable speed, not very far down the runway, which is a thing I've noticed, actually, about most flight simulators, which is a bit annoying sometimes. Anyway, now we're on the rollout. Below 60 knots, so reverse thrust is disengaged. As you're still on the runway, you leave the strobes off. However, I'm going to leave the taxi lights on and turn off all the other lights, as we don't need them. What you then want to do is go APU master and start and get the APU running because when you pull up to the gate you'll need some power and if you then go for another flight what I recommend is go speed managed approach mode off and LS mode off and now that autopilot is ready for the next flight if you go heading managed and then whenever you get your next flight plan set up you'll know what the initial climb altitude is and you just set your autopilot to that again so here it's going to be 5000 up Shannon so I just set that up like that as you see the FMC has wiped itself so all we then do is we just go to the init page. All the other previous stuff would still be there. And all we do is just reprogram it. So now it's done. I'm just going to taxi to the stands. Uh, make sure the APU starts. And now we're exiting the runway. We go strobe lights off. Here we go all the way into the stands. What you now I do is after, as we're off the runway, the spoilers are still deployed. So we de -arm the spoilers. And they re and they come back in. Now what you want to do is get your flaps up, and basically clear the messages on here. So it wants no smoking and seatbelt lights off. So I'll do that when I pull up at the stand. Um, however, that's the gist of it. Turn off all of that, and that will go off nicely. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, just a brief one. Fairly, um, just a brief one, just to show you guys how to use the autopilot. As in the A320, I know it can be a bit challenging, however, it's quite simple once you get to know it. Uh, if you guys want to see a startup tutorial, I'll be rolling one out in a bit. Um, please just drop a like and uh, leave a comment, um, just so that you know if you want, so that I know if you want me guys to do a startup tutorial. I hope the mic quality is better. I'm still uh, learning this, so I hope that was better. If you want to know the Shannon scenery here, because as it is, it's a beautiful airport. Uh, the links for that will be in the description. I'll link them in. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Hope to see you all again soon. Apart from that, good night.